What's up, YouTube? Uh, welcome to today's build video vlog. I don't know if we're going to call this a how-to video because I didn't really know how to do this until I started doing it and filming this video. So, there's a lot of things I learned from this. Some of them I kind of assumed it wasn't 100% sure. I had to learn what I could use to seal the latex with, for one thing. But I also had to cut a seam directly into the back of this and use velcro to close it i just contact cemented in some velcro you can still of course see uh the white of the industrial strength velcro showing through so i am going to at some point use most likely some synthetic fabric dye like from ritz uh, ritz has a line called dye more that does things like that but all this stuff was new to me and experimental and i didn't really honestly know like any of it so this was as much a learning experience for me as I suppose it will be for you if you decide to attempt something like this at home. But one of the things I would have done differently was I start off by wrapping my body with uh, saran wrap and spare Walmart bag, uh, plastic grocery bags and like tape until I'm totally covered in this tape all over. And then I stuffed that and made the body that I stretched the shirt over to make this. I would have like lined that entire body with aluminum foil prior to putting the shirt on it and starting to glue everything. I didn't think of that and just started piecing the aluminum foil in and I actually forgot to put some in the arms and it kind of made him a pain to get off. But I did get him off. So yeah, here we are. Learning experience. Uh, next I'm going to work on some other things from hands, uh, appendages. I want to add some tendrils at some point coming up off the back of this that kind of flow and bob as I move. I've been problem solving working that out in my head. Also, uh, a neck piece and basically a full cosplay. I'm probably not going to do the bottoms next. I'm probably going to do the hands and the neck piece and maybe like an axe appendage for a hand that I can just stick my hand in and put a handle inside. And if I don't want it on, I can just take it off. But yeah, that's enough of me rambling. Let's go ahead and just jump right into the video and see how I did this. Okay, so first thing for this was I had to wrap my entire torso in uh, plastic bags and and uh, packing tape. I would suggest actually using duct tape. I just happen to have a ton of packing tape and I'm broke. So I use that. Much easier to use duct tape. Uh, you don't have to use like plastic bags. You can use plastic wrap or anything like that. I wouldn't suggest aluminum foil or paper. Definitely use something that has some give and stretch like plastic ba uh, bags or plastic wrap. And once I did all this, I looked pretty ridiculous. Yeah, so then to get all of this off of me, I had to have, see if it was, oh yeah, you can still see it on camera here. I had to have my fiance cut up the sleeves pretty much to the elbow on the top of each arm on the front here as well. You can see I cut up. That was so I could pull my hands out of it and actually get out of this. And then on the back side here, I had her cut from the bottom here all the way up in the back so I could get this off. And then I had to tape it back together and stuff it. Now, once again, use something more sturdy than this, like duct tape. You can fill it with expanding foam, although buying a bunch of cans of that's a little costly. And like I said, I'm broke. So I took anything I could find, literally anything. So I started by stuffing the arms with more of these plastic bags and the whole neck and shoulder area. And then to fill all the rest of it, I pretty much used scraps of EVA foam that I cut up with scissors really, really small. I don't know how well show up on camera here, but yeah, this entire bottom part here, you can kind of see the blues and the browns and the blacks in there. I just cut up little chunks of EVA foam and packed them in there and filled it up. And that's how I made my mannequin top. Then I sealed off the top and the bottom with some more tape once it was nice and packed. 
I will point out that there was a couple areas that were kind of saggy and I didn't get packed really good. One of which were the shoulders, so I had to cut a slit in it and stuff a bunch more packing into either side to get them to align properly. And then the neck too, a lot of it just didn't pack in, so I had to slit this open and stuff a bunch more crap in. Now you'll notice up here is EVA foam. I did this to reinforce the neckline because every time I put the shirt on it, it just wanted to compress. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and throw the shirt on this. Okay, so I got the shirt on the upper mannequin bust, which doesn't sound hard, but it was actually a little bit tougher than what you would think. But now that it is on there, I'm going to start cutting out all of my EVA foam uh, pieces that are going to be glued onto here. Alright, so I've already started to cut out all of my foam pattern pieces, the bicep left and right, and all the rib pieces and all the abdominal pieces, one, two, three, four, and five, are cut out of five sixteenths EVA foam mats. They come in a big roll like this. They have this ugly texture on the inside, and I didn't cut the right ones yet because I wanted to show you that I traced my patterns onto the back side. Whenever I cut them, with my X-Acto knife, I cut along the line at an angle, which produces this nice angled edge. I'll be sanding this later, but first I'm going to heat them prior to sanding. And the reason why I'm going to heat them is so that they will curve as they are. If I glue them on, they're just going to stick off and look terrible. So I'm going to have to sand down this texture on the back side so that the contact cement will apply better. And then I'm going to have to heat all these and shape them so that they're curved like actual muscles. I'm going to go ahead and cut out all the rib pieces for the right side and start heating and sanding these. Alright, so I've used my heat gun to heat all the foam pieces here. All of the abdominal pieces I curved both this way and this way. All the rib pieces I just simply curved so I could glue them to the side. The bicep as well has a curve both ways. And the chest pieces, as well, are curved all around. Now I've done all these, save one, which is the right bicep piece. I'll show you how I do that on camera, for example, for everybody watching at home. Okay, so there it is, same as the other, curvature that way, and curvature this way. Uh, I think it's easier to show you on a larger piece on camera how I do this. Now always be careful when working with hot foam, you could burn yourself. Uh, my hands are pretty tough, so I don't really worry about it, but it is advisable to wear work gloves whenever you do this. Alright, on to the sanding and shaping. Some of the ones I've already done are the left and right rib pieces. And to sand these, I did not use a Dremel. I actually sanded them by hand so that I could get them nice and rounded out and have such a squared shape to them. And I used a 150 grit sanding block at first and then went down to a 250 grit. And to show you for some contrast here, here's the left pieces after sanding. And here's the right ones with no sanding. You can see that very definite squared off edge. Now remember I cut these at an angle, but after you heat and shape them, it's flat. So it didn't save me 
uh, all that much, but it did save me a decent amount of time sanding. And to do all these, I use my Dremel. I have a Dremel 4000, it's adjustable, and I have it set right there to do all these. Of course, the chest pieces are going to take a whole lot of sanding. Not looking forward to that. Alright, so I've already started gluing on my chest and bicep muscles. And to glue these on, I am using DAP Weldwood Contact Cement. Now I considered putting a layer of latex, or actually several layers of latex on the shirt first. Maybe I should have, but I didn't. Uh, this will help save latex and money. I don't have any more to invest than what I've already spent on this, so i got to make it work with what I have. So whenever I apply the contact cement, I put a layer on, a nice thick layer. I used a paintbrush to apply it, and I let this sit for 20 minutes. And a lot of it got absorbed into the material. So once that was done, I applied a secondary layer. And over here, I have all my various ab pieces with the contact cement on it set to dry and waiting to be put on. Now I want to show you here on the back side how I sanded these with the Dremel on the back side. I did the same thing to the biceps and the chest as well, which is I sanded down and flattened out the edges so we glue a little bit more flush and smooth and have a nice even appearance hopefully. With that tread, I was afraid it would be sticking off and also have some trouble bonding as well. So I went through and fixed all that. Now speaking of the contact cement getting absorbed in and soaking through, what I did was whenever I applied the contact cement, the second time, I shoved a piece of foil in afterwards because it did leak through pretty badly. So I wanted something dry to separate this surface and the other, at least for the time being. And once this is finished setting in about 10 minutes or so, I'm going to go ahead and glue on the ab pieces. Then I'll move on to the ribs and we're going to start working on the shoulders and the rest of the cosplay. Okay, I got all the abs, the chest, the bicep, and the rib pieces, one through four on. Now I've cut out two collarbone pieces on five millimeter EVA foam which are going to be put on there on either side and I cut out four of the ab side pieces and then flip it over and cut out four more which are going to go one two three four in between the ribs and the abs and I've also cut out the left and right shoulder pieces which will ultimately be, uh, be glued on there and there, respectively. So if you look at this now, maybe it'll make sense as to the order I did all this in. I wanted to start off with the major pieces here on the sides and then do the fillers. All right, next I've cut out the left upper arm rear number one and number two and have sanded, heated, and curved them just like the other ones. Here's the number two piece. This is for the left side. And I've finished attaching my collarbones, uh, the shoulders, and the ab side pieces. And then once I get this filled in, we're going to move down the arms and onto the back. Okay, so I got the muscle pieces for the back of the biceps glued on to both arms. And now I'm going to put on is the upper muscle groups. Now you're going to notice the way I'm doing this, if this was Venom, I would, of course, make all these bigger, and I'd probably use couch foam. And since I don't want a big hulking back, since this isn't Venom, I want it more streamlined and slim. I'm using 5mm for the left and right back top pattern pieces. And these are going to be glued on either side of the back here, just like that. Right now that all my main definition pieces are put on, I have been prepping this for the latex, which I don't want any latex on this actual collar piece. 
that goes around, so I covered it with masking. And the same thing on the ends of the hands here. I taped them off so I don't get any latex on that. If there's excess on this shirt, I will just cut it off. And then I did some stuff with foil in the back here to impress kind of a spinal shape. Let me take it from this angle, you can see it a little bit better. But yeah, to get kind of a spine shape running down the center of the back here. Once I latex over that and it dries, it should hold that shape. Now, I've never done this before, so I don't know how hard it's going to be to peel this off of the dummy, which is part of the reason why I've been stuffing layers of foam in here. Yeah, to separate the actual pieces, uh, the actual shirt from the mannequin whenever I put the contact cement on sure, so it doesn't set and harden and stick just through that. But, you know, as well, I've never actually done this, and there's not a lot of videos or anything on this. Most of them are for Predator, or they're just an interview with somebody explaining how they made their carnage or their venom, uh, venom or their, their Predator suit. That's it. So I'm just kind of flying blind here. But before I start applying latex, I'm going to use my X-Acto knife, and I'm going to start cutting muscle striations into all of these different muscle pieces that I put on. Uh, after that, I am going to heat them so that they open up. However, I am not going to use a heat gun. No heat gun. Hair dryer. A uh, heat gun will melt this fabric, possibly catch it on fire. Uh, so I'm going to be really careful and just use a hair dryer and be patient and get all these like lines that I'm going to cut in it to open up that way. Okay, so I've been applying latex to this, and I didn't film any of that partially because I don't have any tips. I've never done this before on this kind of scale. So it's kind of just feeling it out by ear and move the light around here. So hopefully you can see the texture that I've been putting it into it with a brush. First, I take a sponge brush like this, dip it in my latex and get it to soak in. Once it soaks into the material, I'll show you on the back here. The back does not have the texturing like the front. Once I get it to soak in, It just looks like fabric with latex. You'll notice there's no texture on this. It's pretty smooth. If anything, it has kind of the texture of the fabric itself. But when we work back around uh, down here as well, you can see there's no real texture. It's just a latex shirt on the back at this point, which is pretty lame. But on the front here, I've applied more than just the one layer of latex. I've applied about three, four. And by the third and fourth one, it starts to build up. And as latex begins to dry and set, but before it's totally dry and set, I can run the brush through a little bit with an actual brush and get these brush strokes and get this type of skin looking texture that's running. You can see it really good there in the light. You can see it's running back and forth. Now I'm going to turn around this mannequin again and I'm going to brush it onto the back, much like I did here, to start giving it the same type of texture so it's consistent. It's going to take multiple layers of that, okay? to get it where I want it in that sense. Once that's done, I'm going to start using uh, cotton and sheer cloth to kind of fill in and smooth out all these muscle plates I, I, I put on. Because if I don't smooth them out, it's just going to look like I glued muscles to something. Maybe you can't tell it's a shirt when I get done texturing it and everything has that grainy texture like that that looks like flesh and kind of matches in with all the cuts I did on this. But you're still going to see that it's glued in. So I really want to even and smooth all that out. And to do that, there's two ways. One, I could just goop silicone or latex or some other stuff in between here until it fills. That's pretty expensive, both for the cost of the latex and the cost of the silicone. But for some cheap dollar store cotton balls, I can begin to put some latex down, press the cotton balls in between, soak some latex into the cotton balls and then begin to position them and even them out to smooth this out and make it look more organic and less like I've just glued crap to a shirt and slapped some latex on it. Now that I've applied all my latex to the back here, take the light and show you how I put all the brush strokes in to kind of match and flow with what all we have going on here already with the cuts and the muscles and so on and so forth. And I started on this side, so this side is drier and it's holding the lines and marks a lot better. And you can see when I just run the paintbrush through it there, it just puts those lines in as the silicone, or not silicone, sorry, latex is setting. Missed a spot right there, and right there. And yeah, that's how I get that texture and like muscle fibery look into it, okay? 
And over here, I think it's still a little bit too wet. Yeah, there we go. Starting to get those lines and marks there like I needed. Over here is the wettest, and I've already put marks in it. As you can see, they're already going flat. So, okay, see, boom, I just pull some more in. And that's how I'm going to get that muscular look and that flowing symbiote look over this, okay? Or at least that's what I'm hoping will work. Uh, yeah. But anyways, that's about as much as I can really explain or show on camera for this. Like I say, I'm not an expert and haven't done this before. And I'm just kind of trying to make everything flow, like flow into the ribs. And I also pulled up and downloaded uh, to my phone and tablet and computer. So I always have a reference despite whatever room I am working in. Which is of muscle structure on human beings. And I even found some that are color coded for sections. So it helps separate the different muscle groups visually for me. And has been a great visual aid in doing this particular project. Okay. Now, once this dries and this texture dries, I will go in and just put another layer of latex over it, a thin layer, to help kind of seal all that in, and I'll just continue to build it up and texture and seal it and build and texture over and over and over again until I am happy with the end results and how it's looking. And next, I'm going to start putting in my cotton and my filler and my sheer fabric to smooth out all these muscle groups. Okay, so I've begun all my filling and patching in between the angle of this and the actual undershirt that has been latexed. And you'll notice it's all red. And because I mixed some red dye into my food coloring now, or not, or not my food coloring, red dye into my latex. Now it looks pink until it dries, which gives it this red color. Now all the pink stuff here is the fresh latex I've just applied. And I take a cotton ball and I tear it up into pieces and I just kind of push it into the wet latex which will hold it in place long enough for us to do the rest of it. Go ahead and fill all this in. It feels a little thin. I'll take a small piece. Give it to fill in there. Okay. Okay, so another thing you could do, which is probably advisable or even better than this, is to make your pieces first with the cotton and the latex in it. I don't like that though. Uh, I like to get a feel for it and just do it like this. So, take my brush here and start to dab the latex mixture with the dye on top of it. This is a little messy. I'm out in my garage and I have all my surfaces covered, of course. Because this is, of course, just going to drip anywhere. The excess, of course, I just keep putting on <laughs> the bodysuit itself. I don't want it to go to waste and it just starts to drip off. I take as much of the excess as I can. Okay. Now, once it's on, it's a mess. So, to get it as smoothed out as possible, I dip my finger in the latex so this isn't going to stick to my finger. And I start to push it where I want it and even it out by hand as I want it. Now, you'll notice here this is still ugly even after, you know, evening it out with my hand and doing all that good stuff. However, The point is more so that I'm going to go back over this and even out this gap quite nicely with silicone that I also mix with red dye. So you won't see all this matted, messy cotton stuff. So then you're probably wondering, well then why do it at all? Why not just put silicone everywhere? Well, because the cotton is fluffy. Whenever it absorbs the silicone, of course, it does quite nicely uh, soak it up, but it still remains somewhat spongy.
and I'm hoping this will help allow for some greater movement in between these plates and where they're glued. I don't want to have something too solid like silicone only. I figure this would work better. And I don't know about the silicone with the cotton, but I do know about this because I've seen enough Predator videos with people doing it that I know this will actually work. So that is my process there, and that now wraps up all the cotton areas I want to do. I've done all around the muscles, except for right here I want the definition, the shoulders, the chest, on both sides. I've done this on the back. Now for here, this is only 5 millimeter foam, and I feel like this is small enough of a gap. I'm just going to use the silicone that I mixed with the latex. Okay, now that I have done all of the cotton filling that I was talking about, I have started doing the silicone work, which you'll notice this here is now much smoother than, say, this here, which is very matted and rough. Now, you notice this area here is pink. That's because the silicone here is not dry. Uh, it is dry down into here and is nice and smooth now. It no longer has all the lumps and everything that all these pieces have. Uh, like right in here, this is very rough and kind of ugly. I'm using the silicone to smooth that out. And over here, you can see some of the fresh silicone I've applied and it has not dried yet. It does dry clear, but with the red dye mixed into it, it looks pink until it is totally dry. Now, if you watch my other mask videos, you've seen me apply this to seams on EVA foam masks, and it's pretty much the same process for this. Now, I've done the backside. Sorry to get this into the light a little better. You see, I've done the backside here, and I fold around and I stop here. Okay, I left all this stuff in here rough and ugly so that I can go through and start to cover this up and show you just how I do it. So I've taken my silicone and I have mixed it with some red acrylic dye. And it does look pink. However, whenever it dries, there's a spot that I've already done. You see it's a nice brilliant red. Similar to the latex, so I dip my finger in it. Uh, depending on how you get your silicone, like this comes in a caulking tube. And you have to have a caulking gun to get it out. I don't like to use the caulking gun to spread it on because I can't, I get that, you know, that kind of like that bead. I want just what I want, where I want it, how I want it. So for that, I use my finger and at first just smooth it out as best I can. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to go through and smooth it out some more with some other fun stuff. Okay. You see like all those bumps and lumps and ridges. I'm gonna put this in here. In some of the places I kind of have to dab it like that and get it down into some of the cracks and crevices. It just doesn't always cooperate the greatest. It's not exactly the same as kind of like massaging and working Bondo into something. But it is similar, in a sense. There's something I could compare it to. And any area like there where it's a little bit deeper, I do have to put on a little bit more. And this spot here, I just want to keep not cooperating. And as far as any tricks or tips on this, I don't have much. Uh, this is pretty much a trial and error process that I went to to get to this point with this stuff. <laughs> and just the experience of using it, spreading it, and just knowing what I need, knowing what to do through repetitive use. Now, any sort of fast dry silicone or anything like that, I really don't recommend, honestly, because... What's going to happen is that stuff is usually chalky and isn't as flexible. And I don't feel like it's going to stick to the latex as well. And I can't really use latex for this process because of what I'm about to do next. In a separate container, I just have some plain old water. And I wash my finger off in that and I get it really wet. And whenever my finger is wet, I take it up to the surface and start to spread it out. Once your finger gets too dry, you'll know. Because it won't spread out smoothly and evenly, it'll start to look kind of ugly. 
like it is now. Get some more water on there. And continue finishing that out. And the rest that's excess, I just kind of work into here. Okay. And yeah, I'm just going to go through with my finger and the water and help to spread and even and smooth all this out just like I showed you on the back. Okay, so here it is. See all the pink is where I have applied all my silicone and it's now drying. Let's talk uh, speeding up drying really quick. Uh, for the latex, I use a hairdryer. Once the latex, I don't, I don't do it when the latex is totally wet. I let it dry for at least, you know, 15, 20 minutes until it starts to set a little bit. Then I use a hair dryer at a distance and gradually get closer. And that's pretty good. But for the silicone, uh, anytime I've taken heat towards silicone, I don't have good results. Uh, one time I left something sitting by a window and the sun changed and the sun hit a mask that was drying that had silicone on the seams and it split. So I wouldn't recommend that. The other thing is I have tried to use a hair dryer to speed up the silicone drying process. If anything, it dries the very top of it, but not everything underneath. And sometimes you'll get little separations and cracks and things like that. So I just let this take its time, which is hard for me because I just want to keep going. But for about 24 hours at least, I usually let this dry. And then on the thicker areas, I'll let it go as far as 36. And that's what slows projects like this down. All right, so now that my silicone has dried and all that, if you look at the shoulders here, you'll probably notice a difference in this side from this side, okay? Since I'm essentially just dyeing the latex and all that stuff, any areas where it builds up pretty thick ends up looking really light, such as this right in here. So I am taking my airbrush with some black Createx paint, and this is an adjustable airbrush, so I'm going to give it a nice thin coat of black over all this. I'm not going to put it on too thick, because I do not want it looking absurd, in other words. But I want the proper definition to be blended in for the muscles and stuff. Like I said, I don't want it too bright. So anywhere like up here where you see this really bright red, I'm going to go ahead and darken that up a little bit. And I'm not going to do a really thick coat. I'm just misting it, okay? I'm trying to put about the same amount everywhere. I am going to be latexing over this again, but for the meantime, this will help clear up all these areas where I put the cotton and the silicone to fill all this in. Right, and here is how it looks after I've done all the airbrushing to darken in the appropriate areas and even out the overall color and look as much as I can. Now, next thing is going to be, <coughs> that's right, you guessed it, more layers of latex. Now that I've got the silicone done, the cotton, the base layers of latex, evening out the overall color. Once again, I want to point out, never done this before, I don't know if what I'm doing is right. Now, as far as substituting hand painting, here's the thing, latex and paint, uh, I mean, if it stretches and moves a lot, the paint tends to crack. Airbrush is like a fine, fine mist, and you see I basically just applied black that I thinned out to the point where it's almost like translucent, and just used it to darken in all the appropriate areas here on both sides, like where the muscles meet and the cotton was, so on and so forth. I mean, I think you could do that with brush paint, but I think you'd probably maybe want to dry brush it and put it as thin as possible, maybe in between the layers of latex even, until you get it to look the color that you want. Uh, even if there's things on this that I'm not I'm happy with or I want to correct, I'm going to have to go back and do that because uh, I'm not putting it on any thicker than what I have. Like this here is a little bit too light, but I'm not going to airbrush that any more than what I did. I just put a mist pretty much as equal as possible over everything so that, like I say, I won't have any thick wads of like gobs of paint to crack. Okay, so here it is after one fresh coat of latex that I have tinted red. So let's talk real quick about some of the stuff I've experimented with on this. So I experimented with some puff paint 
and that made it a little thicker and more viscous and did turn it red but if it clumped up too thick it didn't dry right and looked pink so that was a no-no the other thing I tried was Rit Dymore, but this is synthetic, and I just liked the red. The red is brilliant. The problem is it had some kind of reaction with the latex and caused it to clump up, so that was a definite no. The other thing I used was red food coloring. That actually worked great, but what I did for this last coat that gave it a nice, brilliant look was I mixed Kratex Airbrush Transparent uh, Bright Red with some Transparent Deep Red. I honestly thought the deep red would get the color that I wanted, but I tested it first. And what came out was this, which looked more pink. Uh, whenever I mixed in the bright red with it, uh, a little bit more bright red than this. It came out with a brilliant, beautiful, you know, nice red color. So those two worked. And what it looks like wet, in its wet, you know, liquid latex form, is not that color of red. Uh, let me get this off here. It actually looks quite pink, almost like an ugly bubblegum pink. Get this out here, and dab some right beside. So this is the wet, and that's what it looks like whenever it's dry. So it looks can be deceiving. Whenever you're mixing it, go ahead and just put some down to test it. And it does take a while to dry, but if you give it about 15-20 minutes and come back with a hair dryer, it will dry up really, really fast. And then you'll have an idea of what your end product is going to look like. Understand, the part of the reason why I'm using these transparent reds is because they're more like an actual ink. I tried finding red acrylic ink at a decent price and I couldn't. And these I can use in my airbrush as well as for this, so this is what I'm doing. And so far, it's done pretty good. But I'm just going to continue to apply layers of this latex over this until I am happy with two things. One is the color. Like the arms here are still too dark. So I need to apply a lot more there. The other thing is how it feels. I don't want this to feel like a shirt or to look like a shirt once I'm done. Uh, like if I feel in this area here, there's a significant amount. You can't even feel any texture of the original shirt. But down here in the arms, you still kind of can. So these are going to need more layers, I think, so far than the rest of it. But I want everything to feel like a, rubber, a rubberized suit. You know, it's still flexible. It still moves. There's articulation and everything, but all that is going to be necessary for me to actually wear it and function. Okay, checking in to show a quick progress report. This is after applying about three more layers of the red latex mixture that I did all over with about four or five at least on the arms. And some, of course, is still drying in those thicker areas. But, yes, now it is much more... Yes, now it is, it is much more coated. It's feeling much better. Still going to put uh, a little bit more on. But next thing I'm going to start doing is getting some 100% pure uh, clear silicone and adding tint to that and brushing that on. I've also been just kind of playing around with the mask too. I've been applying layers of latex uh, over this as well to help this color. I'll get a little darker and match up to this a little more. However, once I start doing the silicone, this is going to lighten up and brighten up a bit. Because with the silicone for the final, I'm only going to do uh, the bright red. I'm not going to mix in the the other red, just the bright red for that one. Now I just said that I was going to start putting 100% pure silicone on this, but I changed my mind. Instead, what I did was I took puffy paint and I drew squiggles all over this, much like the mask, so the two would match up whenever... Eh, eh, mannequin head. Whenever... Is this actually going to sit there? I highly doubt it. But, yeah, so the stuff on the mask and the stuff on the suit itself would actually match up a little better and made more sense overall. I thought about doing it after sealing it, but I decided against it. So, yeah, I said I was going to use 100% pure silicone. That was the idea. Uh, once again, trying to under try to everybody watching this try to understand that I don't know what I'm doing with this. I just keep getting suggestions from people and I keep trying it out. Some work, some don't. So I took this stuff, I squeezed a bunch of it out, 
and mixed red with it, and then it immediately set, and I couldn't brush it out or do anything. It just solidified in the container, and I threw it away and wasted five bucks. So keep that in mind. Maybe if you squirt it out a little bit and then spread it, nah, it's not going to work. So to get this red a little less bright in these areas, and or sorry, a little a little less dark in these areas, and a little more bright like the mask, just in the center of the muscle area, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some silicone that is called Alex Plus. It's from a brand called DAP. If you watch my other videos, you see me use this all the time. Now this stuff is not the fast dry. The fast dry dries a whitish color and it doesn't mix with the color as well. So this stuff, I've already put some color in it, but I'm going to add some more of the bright red into it. The Createx transparent bright red into it. And I'm going to start spreading this over to help lighten up, highlight essentially, some of these areas in here before I seal it. Now to seal it, uh, after searching low and high and high and low as far as what to use, the constant recommendation I kept finding in things I looked up or in videos was this stuff called Permawet, I believe, from Monster Makers. And they do liquid latex. Monster Makers latex is what I started off on this, but ran out and ran to Spirit since it's Halloween and picked up my own. If you don't have some kind of store like that around you, what you're probably going to have to do is order your latex and all this stuff online. But I found a slew of videos where they sealed their latex pieces, whether they were masks or like uh, chest armor for things like the Predator. They sealed it with a clear, flexible polyurethane sealant. The only one I could find that is readily available and super high quality, it is Class A clear polyurethane, is Flex Seal. So I'm going to run to the store now after I end up, you know, brushing on some of my silicone, uh, uh, acrylic, sorry, acrylic latex with silicone with the red paint to lighten some of these areas. I'm going to run to the store while it dries and picks up, pick up some clear Flex Seal and try that out. All right, I just finished brushing on my DAP acrylic latex with silicone. And you'll notice I didn't put it on all that thick. In fact, it's starting to already dry in here. But you can see it's already, at least in this dry area, starting to brighten up the red a little bit and help it to match the lighter areas of this a little more. I don't want the mask and the suit to be totally off. I want them to look you know, as close as I can possibly get, considering the fact that when I made this, I had no idea if or what I was going to do for a bodysuit. I knew I wanted to do Carnage, but I didn't you know, really know what. So... I'll come back and show you this when it's dry before I start applying my clear flex seal. Now that I got my final layers of latex and acrylic latex with silicone and all that good stuff on here, I'm going to take and put one final application of latex. You'll notice that I've removed all the masking here and you can also see it left some little things hanging off so to speak like this here that I don't want to get snagged and pull off. Maybe I'm being paranoid, but I am just going to go through and just put one quick bead of latex around this uh, so that all these little pieces hanging off I know will be attached and glued down because I really do not want any of this peeling or tearing off after all the hours and all the money I have spent creating this and like I say, even if this is an unwearable piece of crap, it'll be a good fail video. And uh, like I say, I will turn it into the world's largest Carnage action figure. Or just a bust of Carnage, I guess, with the mask. If for some reason this doesn't, doesn't work out. Pretty sure it will work out. Uh, like I say, my only real concern is that I won't be able to get the arms up enough to actually put the piece on myself. And, of course, if that is the case, then what I am left stuck doing is I have to put a slit up the back and use Velcro or a zipper or something similar to end up uh, being able to get this thing off and on. That's kind of my current worry with this whole thing, but even that is not too big of a deal since... I stuff the mannequin, I can just unstuff it to take it out. I'm not worried about releasing this from the mannequin. I'm pretty sure that it will. And like I say, I lined the whole thing with foil. If you're wondering why the foil foils, I don't, I don't have, of course, any sort of like tutorial or book or anything telling me how to do this. I suppose I should have just spent the money and bought one. 
but that's no fun. So through all my online searches and through my own experience, like making prosthetics for my fiance's Too Faced costume, we put those prosthetics on to foil as we were making them and then just peeled them off. So I'm assuming it won't stick to the foil the same way it would to everything else. All right, I ended up doing a couple layers on this just to get everything nice and sealed to my satisfaction. Allowed that to dry. And now I'm going to start applying the flex seal. This is the liquid and it's clear. I'm going to use a two inch wide brush for all the big areas and if I need to do any details or any areas that I miss or if it gets a little thick I'm going to use a smaller brush to thin it out. I have something here to stir it with because you do need to stir it thoroughly. Not shake it but actually stir it thoroughly because it's really thick and pretty viscous prior to applying it. Now, just as a test, I went and did the Carnage Mask, which is not quite dry, but pretty close. And I really like the look of it, and I like the shine, so I am excited to see what this will look like when it's fully slicked up. Alright, so I have a nice, even coat on the entire thing. However... I've already noticed that there is a dull spot. I'm using a light here, see if I can find it again. Okay. So you can see right in there, there is that, looks like a darker spot right in there and a couple more right there. Those are spots where I just missed. So now I'm going to use this light to double check my work. And I have a much smaller brush that I don't mind throwing away. There's all kinds of crap gunked in it. And I'm just going to dip that in. And I'm going to find any of those areas. Just apply the silicone into it. Wherever I might have missed it and messed it up. That way everything is nice and covered. Just like that. Okay, so it has been over 48 hours since I first applied the flex seal polyurethane to this so it is now officially time for me to pull all of the crap that i stuffed into this mannequin i made for this and take this off and see if i can get this on myself without having to cut the back open okay so i have deflated my mannequin from all the stuffing and stuff that i put in it and some of the things i've done is i've cut off the excess if you'll remember, I masked and taped off the excesses, all the stuff that would have gone way past my hands. I'm going to have gloves that are going to come over this, but this comes up pretty much right up to my wrist on both of them. And I trimmed off the bottom here. I may trim off more in the future. I have to make the, the bottoms to this first. But I wanted to start off with this chest piece first because I thought it would be super cool. However, to put it on, I did have to, unfortunately cut a seam up the back here and put velcro in it so i have to split it up the back to put it on and then velcro it shut so how about i go try this on with the mask and see how i look so far i guess before i try this on i should show you briefly how i put the velcro in because i didn't explain that i just showed this off so i glued the hook side of the velcro into this side and the cloth side that it grips on, I glued into the other side. And to glue these on, I used large amounts of contact cement. Okay, so that pretty much wraps it up for this video. Uh, I feel like this turned out better than what I anticipated. I didn't know what to expect going in. Uh, and yeah. I don't know if you should use a straight talcum powder, but I use baby powder on the inside of my arms to help to stop the latex itself from sticking. The rest of this area here doesn't really fall flat enough, at least not when it's on a hanger for storage, that I don't really have to worry about putting baby powder on the inside or anything like that. I briefly considered uh, taking and putting the, the flex seal on the inside, but that would make it even more uncomfortable and even hot. So. What I could find as far as, like I say, my research is that usually when they do stuff like this on the inside, they use talcum powder, especially during storage as far as I know. Sometimes they will put it on a mannequin of some sorts. I don't have anything like that that's going on a hanger, 
but I feel like with the flex seal this should last quite a long time and I also really do like the way that the flex seal really brought out the colors of the mask and in general helped all this to match up uh, to one another much much better I think using that so future videos on this cosplay build to come I have to have this ready for a con in January uh, 2019 so that gives me about three more months to finish this cosplay I'm going to try to get to some other things and some requests in between but the next video is probably going to be uh, some sort of gloves and possibly symbiote weapon appendage that I'm going to make for one of the hands and maybe a glove for the other, I don't know. But, as always, thanks for following me on this crazy journey, or at least it felt like a crazy journey to me. And to all the new subscribers out there, I want to say thank you. And all the past subscribers, I want to say thank you as well. And as always, I hope this video inspired you, entertained you, and amused you. And thanks for watching.